and berries. Berries love rain. I love the rainy season. Brambles adore this time of year. So this is definitely the time of year to be thinking about uh, getting brambles and berries. Uh, so today, uh, we're just going to go over, uh, you know, how, how to grow them, plant them. Uh, the most common question, of course, is how do I trim these things? Uh, so we'll go over all of the basics. Feel free to ask uh, plenty of questions, okay? Um, Excuse yes. Me, I heard on the radio trees as well, or no? I think we're just doing the berries and brambles and, yeah. Okay. Uh, so since we uh, have already kind of started talking about the, the brambles, let's go ahead and get started. Um, brambles, we're talking, you know, blackberries, raspberries, boysenberries, all, you know, that, that type of stuff. Basically, these long, thorny uh, stems that just kind of go wild and produce berries like crazy in the summertime. Uh, so these are, again, they love this time of year. They, they tend to stress out a little bit their first summer. You know, it, when June comes and it gets really hot and really dry, the leaves kind of get crispy if you just planted them. Remember, their, their roots have been confined to this pot, so this is all that they have to draw from. Uh, and they like to have their roots spread out, lot, insulated with lots of soil. So they tend to stress out a little bit. You can still plant them in June, that's fine. But you'll notice, you know, they'll, they'll look a little crispy and, and then when the rainy season comes and they, you know, get over it and, and they start growing out lots of new leaves. But if you plant them now, you'll find it's a lot easier to keep up with uh, the watering and, and uh, you don't have to babysit them quite as um, closely as you normally do. So this is really the ideal time to be planting these. There's a lot of different varieties. Um, basically, just decide how much room you want to allocate to your brambles. Um, it could be as much or just about as little as you really want, but as long as you've got at least a few feet of space, you can do this. Um, they do spread. They'll sucker up from the bottom. You can see there's uh, some suckers coming up from the roots here on the soil. You can see. So they do that, and so they do spread. You can control that. Uh, you can. I've known people to keep these in containers, you know, large containers. I've even seen things like you know half barrels and old dryer drums used. Um, I think if you're going to have a, a big container like that in your front yard, I'd, I'd like to use a, you know, one of the big pottery um, that we have here. Vietnamese clay, very, very, very durable, lasts for years and years and years. Um, and the, definitely you can keep them uh, in a pot, and, or you can put them in the ground and keep them confined to a certain space, no problem. So um, you'll, you'll want to plant them. If you're planting them in the ground, uh, well, first of all, um, when you plant them, just make sure you keep checking for water. Again, their roots have been confined to this much space, and until they root out into the new soil, this is what they've got to live on. So just keep checking. Make sure you get your, uh, if you're using a finger, or if you're using moisture meter, get it in there a, a, a couple of inches. Um, don't worry about the surface of the soil. It's okay for the surface of the soil to dry out, form a crust, that's okay. It's down underneath where we're really concerned. Uh, give them a, a good uh, soaking. Uh, whenever you buy any kind of bramble or vine, tree shrub, they always uh, give you a watering guide. Kind of takes the guesswork out of watering here. Um, they don't usually need it too frequently, but if you at least uh, give it a good deep watering, our soil is really good about holding water and maintaining a cool temperature. So up here in the air, where the leaves are, it can be very hot, and very dry. But down here, it's still cool and, and holding moisture. If you've given it a good deep soaking, you won't have problems with it drying out. So um, give it, for example, if I put this in, I, I make sure you give it a few gallons of water each time I give it a drink. So that way it'll fully saturate the root ball and also some of the surrounding um, soil so that the roots see that there's nice moist soil to, to root out into and that will encourage it to do that. If you're putting it in the ground, uh, dig a hole as deep as the root ball. This goes for all of our trees and vines. Uh, I know that's kind of a new thought sometimes, um, but here uh, we don't have a really deep, deep soil, so there's no use in trying to dig China here. <laughs> so go ahead, just you know, dig as deep as the, the roots. 
and two to three times as wide. I'm going to make a nice bowl shape. Uh, rather than having a cylinder shaped hole, you want more of a, a nice bowl shape like that. Having kind of a shallow grade going in. Did someone raise their hand? Oh, okay, I thought I did. Um, anyway, and then uh, just give it some good uh, water. Check it, I would say, a couple times a week. If it's a really hot, hot week like we had, we've had a, a few weeks this summer, we had record breakers. And they were really hot, we got up to 105. Okay, I go out and check a little more often during uh, uh, times like that. But generally, if you check twice a week, even in the heat of summer, they'll be safe. Just check it and make sure it gets good deep soaking, so check it twice a week to see if it needs water. You should have a, a good healthy plant that keeps growing and doesn't die on you. Use the, this goes for all of the, the grapes, brambles, berries, all of them. So the, the next thing you'll, you'll be wondering about is the trimming and pruning. Uh, this goes for brambles and for grapes. They both produce on second year wood. So you'll have a uh, you have this long stem that grows out like this. Okay, the first year, it doesn't do anything, no fruit. Second year, it produces the fruit. Best thing to do is take some tagging tape, kind of like this, or it could be a piece of flexible uh, cord or string, something that just won't girdle it. It's not gonna grow that much yet, but when you do this, probably. Uh, just something kind of stretchy and flexible. And um, just tie it onto the stem that produced fruit. So do that so that you know which stem produced, because you'll have multiple stems coming out of your plant. So tag the ones that are producing, and then uh, take that uh, the next year when you're doing your pruning, you know, about end of winter, early spring, you're doing all of the pruning around the yard. Cut out all of the stems that produce fruit, because they won't produce again. They, what they'll do is they'll grow longer and, and longer, and they may have uh, berries a little farther down, uh, but you'll have this really long stem that just goes to Timbuk too. <laughs> and it, only a section of it is actually producing fruit. So it's taking up a lot more space than it's worth. Don't bother with that. So just take that out and keep the first year canes, the canes that are only one year old, keep those. Because they haven't produced yet. They're going to produce next year. So you don't want to cut those out. But cut out the ones that have already produced. What will end up happening is you'll left on um, unkept, the canes will stop producing altogether and they'll just keep suckering. Like I said, they, they do spread. And they just keep suckering, same thing, up more canes, more canes, and the next thing you know, you have all these canes taking up all this room and they're not producing anything. Mm. So just take those out and like I said, tag them with the tape, that way when you're pruning, you know which stems you need to take out, otherwise they'll cut them all out or cut out the wrong ones. So really, really simple. Just put on a short little streamer like this. This is actually a little discount tag that we put on it. We're having our, our yearly monsoon sale right now, so everything's on, on sale. Uh, so right now you notice a streamer all over everything, and that's just showing the discount uh, uh, that's on the, on the plant. I have a question. So, yes. Do you do that every single year then as well? Yes, or? every year okay. prune your brambles and rapes. Okay. Anything that's already produced, Cut that off, and you cut it back. Like you, you can actually it. cut it pretty much almost all down the way down down to yeah. the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Remember, they're suckering up from the root, so you don't have to worry about keeping a cane. Um, okay. With grapes, you can do that. Sometimes, though, uh, more commonly done with the grapes is a, a, a part of the cane will be left, maybe you know knee height or something, and it'll be cut back down to that. And, or in some cases, if you don't want to, uh, depending on how you're doing this. The commercial way is to leave about four canes and it just makes it easy for them to keep track of everything. Um, you don't need to worry about this. Most of our, our people around here are not actually doing it that way. You're just putting it up on a trellis. Yeah. They're really pretty plants. Yeah. You know, put it uh, on a trellis on the porch it blocks the sunlight, it makes the porch look pretty. That's what most of us are doing. And so there, you can you know, leave a cane and then let the new canes come out of that. But it really isn't as much of a deal. So you can see here's the, the main cane. And so it was cut back to here. 
each time. You can see all the other stems are coming out of that. So you can leave a, you can see that's only inches tall. Okay. Okay, there's not much there. So it's not a big deal. Um, and those are, is grapes. that new growth then off of that old cane or not? Yeah, yeah this is. Is that considered new for the next year or whatever? This actually, some of this is uh, second year. Because okay. uh, most of the grapes that we've had in here, they did have uh, grapes on them and the birds and the customers have eaten them all. So, or, or the employees, or the dog. The owner's dog, uh, he's pretty good about getting to the, uh -huh. the fruits before anyone else. Yeah. Probably, yeah. But uh, you can see some of them still have some grapes on them. You can see there's a cluster on here. So that is second year um, that did that. And so it'll kind of send out this little stem and tendril and produce a, 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 a grape. But like I said, once that wood has produced, it's not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. So just cut it out. It's not doing you any good after that. That goes for both the brambles and the grapes, unless they have now. Where are you? I think it's here in the back. Just like any ordinary blackberry, except this one actually produces on first year wood. So now you don't have to keep track of anything. You just cut, up, cut, cut them all back and it's, it's going to produce on the first year each time. So you don't have to keep track of which stems have produced. You just cut them all back and let them grow all back at the same time. So that's prime gin. Most of the brambles don't do that. But there are a couple of, of exceptions. I believe also, where's my strawberry shortcake? My raspberry shortcake. Here we go. Raspberry shortcake. Same thing. Uh, it's something you don't have to mark. It's just going to keep producing on first year wood. This is actually a bush type raspberry. So these, these are really cool because for a lot of us, you know, we're trying to garden edibles in a small space. These are wonderful because it's a bush type and it's a dwarf. This is water them every week when they're established. And what about winter? What about winter? They'll, uh, most of these will go dormant. They'll lose their leaves, not the blueberries. They're semi-evergreen. It has to get super, super cold before they lose their leaves. Um, but they'll go dormant. Water a couple times in the winter because they're not drinking as much at that time. They don't have as much foliage. It's cooler. So they, they don't drink as much, but we do have super dry winters here. We might get a couple of good snows if we're lucky. <laughs> uh, so it gets cold, but we just don't get the same precipitation that we would get in, let's say, Flagstaff or some of the other uh, higher climates. So you do want to water a couple times a month. If it's been two weeks since we last had a really good rain or snow, you need to water, or at least check to see if it needs water. So uh, the blueberries, again, this is a semi-evergreen. With the blueberries, the one thing you, you need to know is that you need to have two. They do need to cross pollinate, much like big fruit trees. So two, it doesn't matter which two, as long as they're different. So, for example, this one I think is bountiful. This is sunshine. This one's bountiful. So they they both produce really good blueberries. It doesn't really matter which two you get. Just make sure you get two different kinds so that they can cross pollinate. Otherwise, they will not uh, fruit if they're not pollinated. Those are another one that are really, really pretty in a pot because it's just a good looking bush. Um, always has leaves. Beautiful green and also they sometimes get color like this one. Usually it's in the winter when they, they show this kind of color and that's only a touch of it. They'll actually turn uh, hues of pinks and, and reds and purples all over. It gets really, really pretty. Very pretty plant. And in the spring when they flower, the flowers are these little bell-shaped, uh, pink bell-shaped flowers, really pretty. So another one, if you have a small space and, and you need things that are edible and ornamental, blueberries are a really great one for that. Let's see. Uh, we've got grapes, blackberries, raspberries. Boysenberry is actually a cross uh, between uh, raspberry and blackberry. Something that started in California. You go to California, everybody knows boysenberry. Come here to Arizona, nobody's familiar with it. This is a really great uh, uh, berry that is um, less thorny than some of the other browns. So this is a, another really good one uh, to do. And one of my favorite berries, I just love it. 
And they also, I have a fall gold raspberry here. This is probably the sweetest raspberry. This one throws everybody out because they're used to thinking of raspberries as being red. This one's gold. It's actually a yellow color. So it's going to be really good, especially for fresh eating. You're going to love this raspberry, really. This is, this is another one of my favorites. I actually love that way more than the red. Okay. This one right here is got to be the easiest of the berries to grow. This one right here, this is strawberry. Doesn't take much space. Pretty much pick your pot, <laughs> any size almost, and you can grow a strawberry. It's so easy. And then I send out these runners in the fall. And then we climb up here in fall. In fact, I, I just noticed that some of my strawberries are just starting to look like they're going to send out the runners. So they, this is, each of these is a new plant. If that makes contact with the soil, it'll root in, and then you can snip, snip off the umbilical cord here. And you have a new plant. So you're constantly getting new plants every year. This one right here was a special variety that we brought in this year. It's a white strawberry. Um, this up here, this particular strawberry uh, does kind of need a pollinator with the red strawberry. So they did put red strawberries here on the top and the rest of it is all the white strawberry. So generally you don't have to worry about having different kinds of strawberries. So this is a new uh, But you can see we've got a lot of plants, a lot of producing plants, all in one small space here. This is a strawberry pot. Very, very easy. I love strawberries. They're my absolute favorite fruit. I just can't get enough of strawberries, so of course I have to have my strawberry plants. Again, they're actually kind of pretty. Um, they make good ground covers, because you can see they, they creep and they spread. Uh, so they make a, a good ground cover. They make good trailers for pots, um, even without the trailers. They, they get really full and they look really, really pretty. So this is a, just a fun thing to do. And this is something that you know, if you want something that's low maintenance, strawberries are it. Make sure they get the six hours of sunlight every day. Otherwise, you do tend to see some mildew on there. <laughs> that's the only thing I would say they, they don't do as well in, in a completely shady spot. We, cover, we should cover insects. Uh, the berries, I would say, not too bad on insects, but there are a couple that you should always look out for. Pretty much uh, have to worry of, about to a little bit. The grapes especially have a tendency to get two. Spittle bug, which we're seeing right now. I actually have a little example of it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this around. It's a real tiny little beetle, and it feeds on the stem. It just finds a place on the stem and feeds and hatches eggs and things, and it produces this gooey liquid uh, that it surrounds itself with to protect itself from predators. Predators just don't want to put their face into that <laughs> stuff. Uh, it, it's very much the consistency of spit. It's the name Spittlebug. So you know it right away when you see it. It's, it's kind of the thick liquid that doesn't quite drip down and it's kind of foamy on the outside. You'll, you'll see it on the, on the car. You can kind of pick it up a little bit and see. So that, right now uh, we're seeing that on grapes all over town. That is just a very common one. They don't really get on a whole lot of plants. They can, but they especially love grapes. Once in a while, you see them on rosemary or sage. Oh. So the best way to deal with the spittle bug, uh, the, the stuff that it's producing is not toxic. If, it, if, you, if it gets on the grapes, just wash the grapes off. It is safe. It's just the consistency that helps keep the predator bugs from getting to the insect that's trying to protect itself. So there's no toxin there. Best thing to do is just uh, spray it down with some kind of uh, insecticide, let's say for edibles, of course. If you're going to use a contact killer, this is a, a contact killer. This is neem. It's organic. This is neem oil. Here's uh, another one. This is multi-purpose insect control. Both of these are very effective on pretty much all kinds of uh, insect killers, uh, is all, all kinds of insects, sorry. I, what I like to do is, is take some water and kind of wash the plant off first, because I'm afraid if I just spray this on that spittle, it's just gonna slough off. 
it's it's not getting through to the bug because the bug is under all that goop. So I, I like to kind of wash that off first and then spray it. That way I know it's making contact with the insect because these need to make contact with the insects it's themselves in order to be really effective. Another way to go is this one right here. This is Captain Jack's. Captain Jack's is an ingestion killer. So you spray it all over the plant and when the insects move around and ingest parts of the leaves and the stems, they end up ingesting this. Again, this is organic and safe for uh, edibles. You can spray it on your plant and then eat your grapes and it's safe. But it's something that's not safe for the insects. So this one you don't have to worry as much about having to cut through that spittle to get to the bug. Also another, uh, the other bug that uh, tends to get on grapes, especially in spring, is called the grape leaf skeleton. a little bitty uh, caterpillar like this. They're real small it was, with stripes, like green and black and white stripes, I think it was. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll eat away at the leaf, but they'll leave the veins behind. And so it looks like a leaf skeleton when it's done, and so we call it the grape leaf skeletonizer. And so those can come out and uh, do a lot of damage very quickly, take off a lot of leaves by eating away at them. Again, treatment is the same. You can either use the contact killer and spray all of them down. Generally, you'll, they're small, but there's lots of them all over the, the plant. So you can use the contact killers, or you can spray the plant down with the Captain Jacks. Either way, you'll, you'll take care of them. See the brambles don't have a lot of problems with insects too much. Uh, they may get uh, aphids like anything else, really. Again, go with the contact killer. Aphids, oh, uh, aphids and thrift. Um, contact killers are best. A thrift you can use the ingestion or the contact, but with aphids you always go with contact killer. So either the neem oil or the multi-purpose work very well for aphids. Other than that, I don't notice a lot of insects on the brambles as much. Uh, same with the strawberries. We really don't have a lot of problems with strawberry insects here in this area. I know we did in other climates, uh, other parts of the country, they have all kinds of things with borers and all sorts of problems. But here, the strawberries actually do pretty good. Any questions so far? Hmm. Let's see, what else have we not covered yet? Uh, yes. Is it pretty much just like the raspberries and the blackberries? Uh, I think this one you don't have to worry about the second year wood thing. It just produces on the bush. So you might trim it up for shade, take off anything that's dead. Uh, <coughs> otherwise, very, very easy, very simple. Uh, if, it, if there's a place where you need an ornamental bush, you can plant this one. It's a deciduous bush. It'll lose its leaves and it'll grow them back out in spring. So I, I find most most of the, the edibles it can be very practical to put around the house. You don't have to necessarily have a section that you can dedicate to edibles. You can very easily find a space for things like gooseberries and currants and uh, just you know, trim them for shape and, and then uh, enjoy the, the berries. Okay, right here, okay, let's do it up. this is a fertilizer. This will work on pretty much everything. It was made specifically for our needs here. It's got a nice wide range of, of minerals and nutrients so that it can support all the different plants, give them all what they need. So this is something, you don't have to have five different fertilizers for five different kinds of plants. You can have just the one. Use this on your potted plants, on things that are growing in the ground. You just use this. It's got the iron and magnesium and everything that they need. So this will support fruit trees, brambles, strawberries. It's what I feed all my stuff at home and everything is very, very happy with this fertilizer. So just get a, a good complete fertilizer. This is a slow release. Generally lasts for about three months in the soil. 
sometimes with heavy feeders like fruits and veggies can be, uh, you can go a little more often, especially if they're in pots or very sandy soil, which leaches nutrients faster. You can go a little more often. You can do something more like every uh, six to eight weeks. But even on <coughs> three months, I find this really does work very well. In fact, I need to fertilize my stuff at home. <laughs> I just remembered that. I was done. I keep putting it on. It's really easy to apply, actually. Um, when you open this up, and for those of you who haven't seen this yet, when you open it up, it, it's just this, uh, you see different colors of granules, little pieces of things. It's just natural stuff, like cotton seed meal and bird guano and things like that. So you won't see crystals or granules. It, it'll be just natural looking stuff. Just wrap it like chicken scratch and toss. That's what I do. I like to go out with my niece and, and have her do it because she loves it. She gets to just grab it and start tossing it everywhere. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So it, it, it's something to you know, get the kids involved and uh, see if you can get any berries that they've left behind to enjoy and, uh, and have fun with it. This is another one. Uh, this is an uh, elderberry. This is another one that we sell both as a edible and as a ornamental. A lot of people just buy it for an ornamental because it has this lacy black leaf. Really cool, it gets around six feet tall. And you can keep it trimmed to a smaller size if you want to. Got a few berries left. I think the birds got most of them. There's a few on there. So uh, that's another one. We just planted some across the street at the, at the new office and it's doing very, very well there. They look really pretty. Okay, what else haven't we covered yet? When are we going to have fruit on different things? Uh, a lot of it you're looking at, say, July, for, the, for especially for the brambles uh, and grapes. You're looking at uh, July to August. Grapes, it seems to be a little bit later. Uh, the grapes are actually ripening now. In fact, when I was just pulling this stuff up for the class, I was kind of <laughs> Case testing some of the berries are very sweet. <laughs> so you can see uh, on here we've got some uh, purple grapes. Not all of them are, are ripe yet, some of them are. But some of the others that were out there are completely ripe and ready to eat. So the grapes are a little more like late July in, and through August. The brambles are about July. Um, the blueberries are a little earlier. And they all are once. Um, most of them are once, unless you have a specific variety that produces twice. In the case of the strawberries, it's mostly May, but there is a what we call a June bearing, which for us, they always seem to produce more in May than June. But that's a, a variety that only produces once. Uh, and then there's ever-bearing strawberries, which produce pretty much throughout the, the whole season. Uh, they, instead of having a, a big, bountiful harvest, all at once, like the June berry, the June berry strawberry has, it's just a little bit over time. Uh, this one is, yes, June berry. I don't remember. <laughs> but May is definitely where you're going to get most of your strawberries. Um, okay. Well, yes. Cup cherries. Okay. Um, for you know what? I believe the choke cherry you just need one. Uh, it is something that uh, not a lot of people grow because it's something that's pretty much just for cooking and baking. Because uh, if you try to eat them fresh, they're, they're so tart that you take a choke on them. <laughs> that's where they get their name. So, but yeah, we do uh, sell choke cherries. I don't think we have any in stock right now, but uh, I, I think with that one it's a fertilizer. Self, uh, self-fertile, self-colonizing. Yes. Which of these varieties um, come corn with Because I know there, there's a lot of thorns on lot of berries. Yeah, blackberries and raspberries can have a lot of thorns. There are thornless varieties, or we should say near thornless. Uh, I know I have some up here. The boysenberry is uh, one that's near thornless. I don't see any thorns on it right now at all. Generally. You, you might on the thorns varieties, you see there's some thorns just down near the base where you're not handling it much anyway, so it's okay. Uh, where's the other one? 
black satin blackberry is another one. Uh, this is a new dwarf blackberry. It doesn't get as big uh, as a normal blackberry. It's not quite as tall. Uh, this one is a thornless, and it's called Baby Cakes. There's another one. What was it? The prime gem has thorns, but it's not quite as bad as, as some of the others. Uh, I think the one that we sell most for thornless blackberries is the black satin. Because the, the stems are satiny smooth, they have no, no thorns. So if you can remember that, remember black satin. That is the one we sell the most for thornless blackberry. I can't remember if really having a thornless raspberry, except maybe this, the raspberry shortcake isn't real thorny. Um, which is really nice because when you have a bush, you tend to get your hands into it more. <laughs> the, the, the thorns on raspberry are a little bit different. It's more of that kind of fuzzy thorn. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. Mm. Not quite. The, 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 the blackberry has an almost rose-like thorn. <laughs> yeah. And then the, yeah, I think that's all I can remember off the top of my head, the thornless. The black, black satin is generally the one you're looking for. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Does netting help? Oh yes, netting. Thank you. Where did I put that netting? And when do you yes. put that on? Uh, that's a very good question. When do you put on netting? More important, when do you take it off? Okay, when um, the fruit is right about where this is, where it's starting to ripen, you need to have this netting on there. Because uh, as soon as it's ripe, the birds will get to it before you do. <laughs> The other thing is, you need to remember, if you're using scare tactics on birds, again, you would put these up right when the, the stuff is ripening. It could be scare tape, you know, the long reflective streamers that, uh, you know, catch the light and flap in the wind and scares the birds away. It can be something like this, which is a, a balloon you blow up and it has a big 3D eye on it and it scares the birds away. Uh, any, any of the, the, the scare tactics, only have them up as long as necessary. Put them up when the uh, fruit is about to become ripe. Take them off as soon as you're done harvesting. The birds do get used to them. So don't let them get used to it, otherwise they're going to be useless next year. So put them up for that short amount of time. And yes, it's plenty looking. <laughs> this is uh, something that the, um, the farmers use a lot. Yeah, they're the commercial growers. They use these big balloons. It's a you know, big balloon with a huge, ridiculous looking eye on it. And uh, this is what they use a lot. So we do have these. They're effective, kind of funny looking. And there's also some scare tape in there as well, comes with it. It's got a reflective little bit in the eye to catch the light better. Just for, just for vehicles in California, like Carlsbad, where they have some big uh, strawberry groves. Oh, yeah. there. They got a guy that walks around with a bull whip and just cracks it all up. Wow. See, that's all he does all day long. Just okay. walks around the field and cracks his bull whip. Okay. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you get paid to be a scarecrow, I, <laughs> I can think of worse jobs, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I agree. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so he was saying that the uh, rabbits were devastating his grapes. Uh, was that this year or last year? Okay. They have been really bad lately. They're they're just devastating everything, and even things that they don't normally eat. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a problem with rabbits or other rodents or animals in general, it is a good idea to put up a physical barrier that can be for some some things uh, you can put up. The bird netting, you know, that may work on things like deer. For the rodents, not so much. Um, it depends on how small the, the netting is, but at least the baby rabbit, I think, would be able to go through this. And some rodents would figure out that they can just chew through it. So it is better to have like chicken wire or something more sturdy. Rabbit wire is going to be your best friend. Yeah, there are repellents that you can use because I know not everybody can put up a fence or some kind of physical barrier and I know some people just don't like to because they don't like the look of it. 
there are repellents that you can try as well. I, uh, we have them down at the store. Um, basically, it's just a really strong smell that they cannot stand and they want to leave the area. Uh, also things like uh, super strong herbs like mint uh, can also have some effect. This year, um, the repellents have been effective most of the time, but there have been a few cases here and there where the animals are ignoring them. They have been really aggressive this year. Like, it, it's just been amazing, really. We are having problems. So physical barriers are really going to be the best bet. If you can get some hardware cloth or rabbit wire, that's, that's going to, to offer the most protection. Yeah. What about um, like leaves? So the leaves, if they start turning colors or something like that, I sometimes that'll indicate like nutrients versus water versus acidity. Yeah, that sure. Stuff. Is okay, that... so the question was, what happens when the leaves start turning funny colors? Does that mean there's something wrong? Usually it does. Right now what you're probably seeing is yellowing. Is that it? Yes. Right now it's monsoon season. So the plants are getting a lot of water. <laughs> and what will happen is uh, if there's not enough iron in the soil while they're getting all this excess water, it will cause what we call chlorosis, where you see the yellowing in between the veins and eventually the whole leaf turns yellow. Uh, that's chlorosis. And it, if you see it at other times of year, it means you're watering too frequently. But right now, it's probably not you. You should blame the rain. Uh, so give it a, an iron supplement to get it back on track and do be careful about your own watering. Remember the rain is doing so much of it, you don't want to uh, overdo it by adding too much more. So make sure that the soil has time to dry out since the last rain before you go and water it. I know some people this time of year they'll forget, you know, we're getting the rain and they'll forget to turn off the irrigation. And <laughs> someone came in yesterday and it has really bad chlorosis and, and fungal spots. So it's just one of those, remember to take, turn off the irrigation. It's easy to forget, just turn it off and then go out and check and see if it needs water if it's been a while since it rained. Uh, other colors, on rare occasions you may see red. Uh, generally on these types of things, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, but uh, sometimes you'll see some some reds, uh, especially in certain fall color plants like maples, it, it just often has to do with the, the weather. It's not, not anything to worry about. The yellow is the one you, you don't have to worry about. What about when they turn brown and dry and stuff? Is that if, they're turning, if they're turning brown and dry, now assuming that it's like brown, brown, not kind of blackish brown, okay, it, it's probably stressed from dehydration or sun scorch. Again, that first summer can be especially hard. Uh, make sure you're giving them deep soaking. So again, you know, something like this should have a few gallons on it. Something like this, this is a small pot, you might think, oh, it doesn't need much, throw a cup of water on it. This is something you want to put a couple gallons on. Because, you know, the first gallon, it, it doesn't have enough volume to really penetrate and spread through the soil evenly. And so it, it kind of runs off or it'll soak in and go to one side and, and not saturate the entire root ball. So for a, a one gallon pot the size after you've planted it, put in two gallons of water to make sure that it really soaks in where you want it to go. And then also I do recommend this. This is a root and grow. This is a rooting hormone. Uh, especially during the summertime, like I said, they, they need to root, they need to it, it, it's crucial for them to have a good root system in order to survive. So I do definitely recommend the root and grow for uh, brambles, berries, especially the brambles and grapes, especially those. Uh, use, the, use the root and grow. It, it uh, encourages new root growth. Something to understand, when a plant is under stress, the first thing it does is pull energy away from the roots, which is the last thing you want it to do. The most important thing at that point is for it to root. But when plants are under stress, they actually want to pull the energy away from rooting. So instead, uh, we give them this rooting hormone and it sends them a, a message saying, no, you need to root. And so then it can come out of that panic phase and root and, and get used to its environment and start growing again. 
Uh, any other questions? All right. Okay.